Hello YouTube and welcome to tutorial number 28 in the PHP programming tutorial series and in the last tutorial we looked at how to insert data into a table using um, PHP and MySQL queries and we inserted data into this users2 table and in this video we're going to look at how to read that data using a PHP um, MySQL query and then return that onto a, a basic web page for users to view okay so the first thing we want to do is we have this users2 table we're going to go ahead and um, empty this table so go to your PHP my admin and list the tables in the accounts database and just click on um, empty or clear and that will remove all of the records that we have and now what we need to do is click on insert and we're going to just insert two mock values so the username is going to be um, I don't know Jerry Bob and the password is going to be password and then the first name is going to be Jerry last name is going to be let's put it Smith Jerry Bob's not a very believable name and then for the second record we're going to put the username as um, I don't know camera 55 just we'll hold up things in front of me right now um, password will be password 5 the first name will be John and the last name will be um, Adam so you've got Jerry Smith and John Adam and we'll just hit on go down here okay so we've inserted two mock results into our database so we just go back here um, and we have Jerry Bob and camera 55 in our database ready to be read by our PHP code. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and open up your Notepad plus plus, and I've already saved a file called read.php because I just started recording this tutorial and then I realised that my mic wasn't turned on. Silly me. But the first thing you need to do is store a variable as um, this is going to be the connection variable as always. We'll call this accounts, and then that's going to equal MySQL underscore connect, and we have our brackets. And inside of our brackets, we have our host our username and our password now for people who are watching this outside of watching the whole of my series this will be uh, the username and password for your MySQL database and as we've all set up PHP my admin on our local host we've set our own username and password mine is root and password I don't know what yours is but the first one is the host local host then we have our username which is root and then we have our password which is password so these three things right here will vary Localhost should work unless you're using an external MySQL database, but excuse me, localhost should work for most people. So after this, we'll just have our or die, um, oops, MySQL underscore error, just in case you run into any errors. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, as usual, is select the database account. So MySQL underscore select underscore DB, and then in brackets the first. Um, parameter is the actual name of the database which is called accounts and then the second we need to put our connection which is accounts the variable accounts okay so up until now we've all covered these three lines of code that should be starting to become quite familiar the connection variable and then selecting the database and now is where we use our MySQL query to um, to select data from a database so we need to first create our query inside of it, just a string and let me just explain something about this w real quick let me just create this variable now create, an, oops, create a variable called SQL and just leave it blank for now you can just leave it well on like that and what we're going to do is create our MySQL query code so MySQL uh, underscore query and then in brackets and the first parameter is SQL which is our query that we're going to hold in this string then a comma and the second parameter is the connection variable accounts okay so I want to just get something um, clear where the bleh, when I store a SQL query in a variable up here it doesn't mean you have to what you can do is where it has um, SQL here the variable you can just simply put quotations and then type your SQL query in here but the reason I store it in a variable up here is because it looks much more understandable and more readable to the eye so this you don't have to store it in a variable you can just put it in quotations inside of the brackets 
but I find it's easier to just have a variable there and um, you know it's it's less confusing and it's easier to edit so um, now that I've got that out of the way what we're going to do is create a query that will return some values inside of our database so first thing we need to do is specify our MySQL query now you remember how the MySQL queries work you know they're pretty much just like plain text they're quite um, logical the syntax of the code and for this all we need to do is type select and then a space and what we could do here is type each field each um, field name in sorry each column separated by commas but what we're going to do is just type a star sign and what this will do is select each every single column from this table so it's going to select all of the co all of the columns so we've got um we have id username password first and last so it'll select all of them and then we just type from and now we need to specify our table and in our case the table is called users2 but you might obviously have a different table name so make sure you customize that according to your mysql database so now that we have our query set up here but there's one change we need to make from all the other tutorials what we need to do is we need to store the response from this query inside of a variable so just here we just type make a variable called result and just specify that to mysql query and then we've got a query here so if we just go over what we're doing here um, we've obviously connected up here you guys know what that means and then we've selected the database accounts inside of this connection but here what we've done is we've made a new uh, mysql query and it just says select everything from the table users to and we just run our query here we run this query in the connection of accounts okay so <clears throat> The next thing you need to do is actually read this response. Now, it's not how you think. It's not all, you know, just a line of text showing all the results. It's actually, um, this data is stored in something that we can't read th through plain text. So what we need to do is use a PHP function called MySQL Fetch Array. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a while loop. And this is um, moving on a bit you know too fast without explaining what the mysql fetch array does well that's because we need to loop through each result so we need to just get this out of the way first just type while and then just type two brackets and then opening bracket and a closing bracket so we have our while loop here and you guys know as with a while loop this while loop will run as long as the condition inside here is true and what um, we're going to do in here we're going to say while row oops row equals and then type mysql underscore fetch underscore array and then in brackets we need to just specify the variable that holds the mysql query and that is result right here so have result there and what this will do this mysql fetch array function is this will pass this same um, result uh, mysql query response and it will just put it down into an array that we can read and this while loop will loop through each time um, using the first the first while loop will use the first row the second one will use the second row and as soon as this has reached the end of the rows it will return false so this um, result will be equal to false and then the while loop will stop so um, how we reference each of these in each of the while loops while it's um, processing we, we do it like this we um, do the variable row and then in square brackets we type the name of that um, field or column whatever so let's say username if we type this each time this while loop runs this row username will be the username of that row that it's running so the first one will be jerry bob and the second one will be camera 55 so um, what we can just do is just echo that out because we can just say echo um, row and then in brackets username and um, what, what we're gonna say um, we'll just put the name so we'll just concatenate we'll say usernames first name is and then we'll just have um, row first and what this will do is this will just take the the username from each field it's kind of I'm getting really tongue twisted right now because I've literally just woke up and started recording this so 
I apologize for all the stuttering, but I'll go back and explain it all in a moment. But what this will do is this will select the username column from here, so it'll take the username from each row, and then it will take the first name as well. And we can just do this for all of them. We can just use like, um, like what would the easy way to do it would be is to just declare like username is equal to row username, and then um first is equal to row first and that will just store the variables inside of uh, easy variable right here and we can just use that just type username and first instead so it's much easier to read and we'll also need a break on the end of that as well okay so just save that and we need to go to read.php and you'll see that it says Jerry Bob's first name is Jerry and camera 55 first name is John so let me just go back over that and um, just explain it a bit better because I didn't really explain it properly. Um, so we have a connection and we have select the database and we've already been over the query. But what this while loop does is this creates a while loop and it creates a new variable called row. And what that does is uses the PHP function mysql fetch array. And this will just, what this function will do, it will translate the result into an array. So we can just read it as an array instead of some um, text that we don't understand in PHP and then we can loop through that using a while loop so each time it's going to have so the first one is going to be the first result sorry the first part of the array and then the second one is going to be the second part of the array and the array in this instance is row and when it comes to the end of the the lines of rows it will just stop this will return false and the while loop will stop so I hope that explained it a bit better I just I didn't really plan this video at all. I just started recording, so I apologize if it's sloppy. But um, I haven't really got much time, free time to record this right now, so I have to get it done quickly. So yeah, that's that's it really. We can also do this to put put it into like a table. So um, we could just make a table appear, and then we can have each table row will hold these um, a username and a first name. But I don't think I have time to do that. I'll cover all of this in the community tutorials further down the line. But yeah guys, thanks for watching the tutorial. Please like and comment and subscribe. Um I apologize if it was a bit uh if I stuttered a lot in this video, I guess. I, I don't know, I'm just kinda confusing myself because I'm just so tired and I forgot what I was gonna be covering, but this that's it, so leave a comment and stuff. Goodbye.